Hi, this is Dr. Lara Irvin Kassab. I'm an assistant professor at San Jose State University in San Jose, California, and this is just a super quick uh, video on how to kind of set up your course landing page in Canvas to help students navigate in this time of online transition. So right now I have my practice course open. It is currently unpublished. Um, if you take a look over here on the left, this is my um, navigation bar that students will see. And this is how it was set up for live class engagement. With my live class, I kind of try to rank the pages that they're going to go to most frequently at the top. So I really want them to be able to access assignments. We use the discussion board every once in a while. Um, of course, grades is something they're all very, very interested in and people, um, then pages and files. So those tend to be my top pay, uh, links that they go to when we have a live class. However, now that we're transitioning to an online scenario, what I really want to do is put up here in the top what it is we're going to be using most frequently for our synchronous sessions. I want to make it as easy as possible for my students to find what it is we're going to be using in the Canvas platform when we meet. So in order to do that, I have to first decide what it is that I want to move around. And then I come down to the very bottom here. I click on settings. And it'll pop up all of these different areas of settings. What I want to do is actually start with the navigation panel. I want to change what it is and how students see things in navigation. So for this purpose, because we won't be necessarily meeting face to face and I don't use it uh, in this particular setting, uh, chat, I'll be disabling. So I click on these three but little dots here. I'm going to disable chat because I want to try and clean up this uh, navigation bar so that students will not be overwhelmed by so many different options. Also, attendance. I will know if they have attended by simply seeing who's coming to the session. So I'm going to disable that one. I'm going to disable portfolio because we don't use it and it'll just confuse students to have it sitting there. I'm going to disable Criterion and Lockdown Browser as well because these are, again, things that I don't currently use in the class and just having them all here makes this list very overwhelming. Um, now, when I disable them, it doesn't mean that they're gone. It just means they've moved down into this area down here of different apps that I'm currently not using in class. I will be using Google Drive because I'm going to have my students um, do some collaborative work using Google Docs. So what I actually want to do is come over here. See right now I'm down in the uh, th things I'm not using group of um, group of apps. So what I want to do is actually click on that and because it's in the not using, it actually is to enable it. So I want to enable Google Drive. <clears throat> so now that I've got my list somewhat cleaned up up here, and I want to think about organization. When I am wanting my students to come into this room, the very first thing we're going to do in synchronous sessions is we're going to use this conferencing app. This conferencing app links to something called Big Blue Button. I have a couple of videos already in my channel here for you to be able to see on how to use that. But because it's going to be one of the primary things I want my students to go to, I'm actually going to put it right up here at the top. I want my students to be able to find it extremely easily. Um, then the next thing is going to be... Uh, my modules, because I embed my assignments and the instructions and readings into my modules, I want my students to be able to easily and quickly navigate to that. I'm leaving announcements as the second um, navigation tab because especially with things changing so quickly, I want to be able to post an announcement, my students to be able to quickly find it and reference and see when was an announcement posted, maybe revisit that posting, et cetera, et cetera. 
the next thing I'm going to put here is discussions because that's another button here within um, Studio that we're going to use. And then, oops, I'm going to take Google Drive and I'm going to move that up so that my students can now access our class Google Drive very easily. And Studio, I'm actually having my students also create videos in Studio, similar to what I'm doing right now for you. So once I have all of my tabs ready, all of the navigation that I want, I take a look at it and I think, is this the way I want things to be for my students? I'm going to move pages up because I often put information in pages and files for my students to be able to see. Um, once it's the way I want it to be, here this is an extremely important step, and it's the last step. I need to remember to come all the way down to the bottom and click on Save. If you don't click on Save, it won't save your new navigation. You can see here now I've got all of this navigation ready to go. Um, I look over here and I see right now this is not visible to students, so I want to make sure that I am uh, going to make this visible that it's unlocked and ready to roll um, modules same thing there's no content so it automatically when there isn't any content puts it as not visible when you start loading content just make sure that these buttons are clicked so all students can actually see what's in your navigation bar so that was how to set your classroom canvas navigation bar up for online environments I hope this was helpful thanks